Uh, but the welfare payments don't, do not go down. And it's not welfare payments for the poor. Sure, they get some. But that's probably puny compared to the trillions of dollars of bailing out of big banks and big corporations and much of which we can't see because the bigger bailouts were done by the Federal Reserve and we can't even find out what they did do. This is why it is so important that we understand exactly how the Federal Reserve works. It is an arm of big government. Big government spending for welfare state is a major part of it, but, but you couldn't fight these wars either if you had to pay for them. But as long as you have a Federal Reserve that's willing to print this money, they have a greater license to go and pursue these wars and the welfare state. But it's coming to an end. And this is why what we're doing now, what you're doing together, and what we have to do is so vital because the, just as, I mean, I believe it's really a big, big news item what's happening in the Mediterranean in the Middle East. All these countries and involving uh, the Persian Gulf. At the same time, what's happening in this country financially, they can't stop it. it. Before, you know, the real breakdown of our system occurred in 71 when that gave license to the Fed to print, uh, you know, at, at will. But that is coming to end. We would go have recessions and we would come out of them, but we've literally been on a on, on a downswing in our economy since the year 2000, but much worse in 2008. And that is the attempt for the market to correct the mistakes, but all we do is we add to the mistakes. We have problems at an imbalance because governments spend too much, they borrow too much, they tax too much, they regulate too much, they print too much. So we have a crisis which was predictable by the Austrian economists. It comes. So what, is, what do they do in Washington? They spend more, they inflate more, they, they regulate more, and they tax more, and they think it's the solution. They think if you have a cancer, you give them another cancer, and they're supposed to get better. So <laughs> it, it, uh, it, it makes no sense. But because of what's happening internationally, because we have no restraints on our involvement overseas, at the same time our economy is coming apart, we are going to move into the next phase of our crisis. And the next phase of our crisis is going to be a dollar crisis. And I believe it's already started. It has started because, if you haven't noticed, I think some have told me that the prices at the grocery store have gone, started to go up. And what does your government tell you? Our government tells us there's no inflation. Bernanke tells me, he says a little inflation is helpful, and I can control it. I want 2% inflation. I only want to send... I only want to steal 2% of your money every year. And he knows how to control it. He keeps arguing that. But they, they're going to continue. But this, the dollar is going to keep going down. Against other currencies? Probably, but I don't know. But I do believe that it's, it's accurate to say your dollar is going to go down in purchasing power. And the reason why that is more significant now than ever before in the history of the world is that never have we had a total fiat currency used as a reserve currency in almost all the central banks of the world. I mean, they, they don't even believe in gold. And so they have paper money there, so it's going to be uh, worldwide. So we will have that. We will have higher prices, and probably another part of the financial bubble will be the uh, bursting of the bond bubbles. Bond bubbles, not, not, uh, not immediately with the government bonds, because that will be one of the last things to go, but I think the municipal bonds, because of the trouble that the states and the municipalities are in, those bonds are going to go down, which interest rates are, it means interest rates are going to go up. They will work hard to maybe still cling to the treasury bills and say, oh yes, everybody loves the dollar, we're going to hang in there with our treasury bill. But this will, this will continue. I do not understand for a minute how and why they do it other than the fact that they want more power. I cannot understand how intelligent people can argue the case that there's nothing wrong with, if you need money, just print it. <coughs> you know, the, the, founders, the founders knew about this. They knew of runaway inflation with the continental dollar. They said, you can't emit bills of credit. You can't print money. And only gold and silver should be used as legal tender. And they did not give authority. Whoa. authority for a central bank. Now I mentioned that the other day to somebody and I said, yeah, but doesn't everybody have a central bank? I said, that is true, but that doesn't make it right. And uh, history 
and, uh, and, and, and the laws of economics are on the side of hard money and sound money. Uh, there hasn't ever been a paper currency that uh, value did steadily go down. How many paper currencies of 500 years ago or 1,000 years ago, or even 100 years ago, or continental dollars, you get them, they're, they're not worth anything. But what, what, would you, what would we do if we picked up a coin from the Roman Empire? We would all know that it's money. And that's, it, it's the honesty of money which uh, really bothers the dishonesty of the people who want power and control and fight wars and redistribute wealth, uh, you know, with, uh, through the monetary system. The monetary crisis uh, is uh, still yet to come. It's going to get a lot worse. But we will have an opportunity because the only thing that re can, can restore stability is sound money. It's happened so many times. Governments then have to say, get our house in order, quit the spending, quit printing the money, and go back and have sound money. It'll have to be worldwide. The opposition, those in the IMF and the World Bank, believe me, they know exactly what we're talking about right now because they're laying plans. What they're laying plans for is an international fiat currency. If the dollar doesn't work, they figure if the IMF will print the money, it's going to work. But that's not going to work either, and I don't think the American people will put up with that. No, sir. Whoa. Personal liberty is really the solution to the international crisis, the foreign policy, as well as the domestic crisis. So that is what we should be uh, talking about and, and un understanding. We don't need to continue with a foreign policy where we're in 700, uh, 130 countries, we have 780 bases around the world. That cannot be maintained and it has to be changed. So uh, if, if we concentrate on liberty, what we do is we concentrate on our history. We don't have to invent liberty. Even though liberty, the ideas of freedom are relatively new. They've only been tried and true to, uh, and tested for a couple hundred years, mostly in this country. And we have benefited, we continue to benefit by the residual of the free, free market system and freedom. But unfortunately, the prosperity we have today, although sharply declining, what we have is based on debt and an obligation internationally. We're the greatest debt, debtor in the history of the world and we owe like a trillion dollars to the Chinese. Uh, prosperity cannot be maintained that way, so it will have to be uh, reassessed. But the emphasis on liberty comes from the fact that the founders understood this. They, they, they didn't write a document telling you exactly what the government could do. Most of the, the, the Constitution tells you what the government was not allowed to do. Whoa. And uh, fortunately, the Constitution wasn't written to tell you what you should do with your life. Your life was your own, and you were supposed to take charge of your life and use your life as you so please, as long as you don't hurt other people. Today, this doesn't happen. I mean, you don't have property rights or individual rights. You have to ask the government practically everything. Pretty soon, they're going to be interfering on what kind of food we can eat and taste and, and everything else and, and what we put in our mouths. I happen to have religious convictions, and I do believe that one of the obligations in a free society is to uh, deal with the issue of uh, eternity and what that means for us. And that's a private choice. It's an individual choice. And we protect that rather well. We have freedom of religion. We can still go to our churches. There are some bigots out there. But basically, most Americans uh, recognize uh, this, this to be the case. But... If we, if we permit people to make all the decisions about their everlasting soul, why is it that we've accepted the notion that we have to ask the government what we put in our mouths, what we smoke, what we do, what our habits are, what our sexual habits are? I don't think the government should be involved in any of that. The government should just leave us all alone. Whoa!